Hello everyone and welcome to Body Bags. I'll be your reviewer for today. I'm Lonnie from Terra and Tats. And uh, yeah, I think, you know, if you've been watching the videos this week, you know, we're doing a theme week. And um, the theme for this week is Asian Horror Volume 2. And the one that I decided to go with, uh, this is going to be a tiny bit on the controversial side. But um, yeah, this is the first, um, I believe this is the first one in the line of, yeah. The first one in the line of the Nikatsu uh, Erotic Films Collection, and we're talking about Zoom Up Rape Site, and sorry, I can't really hold that up too too long. There's a, yeah, some stuff on there that I think YouTube would definitely find questionable, but um, yeah, just so you know, do have it. Anyway, um, this movie, oh boy, this is definitely one to talk about. Um, how would be the best way I would describe this movie would be, I think probably the best way to describe this movie would be if uh, the Japanese were trying to do their version of a giallo. And um, this movie, um, if you're going to watch it, I would definitely recommend you watch it by yourself. Uh, do not have any, would be a very wise decision not to have women or children in the room while you're watching this movie. Uh, this movie is definitely not going to be for them. Um, I understand people will say, well, you know, Japanese have a different way of doing things. Their culture is different than ours and everything else. But the thing is, is I think if somebody was to, you know, uh, especially like modern day feminists and stuff, I think if they were to watch this movie, they would be, they would consider it probably the most mis misogynist thing they've ever seen in their life. So I would definitely say if you're going to check this movie out, then yeah, probably the best thing for you to do is watch it by yourself and, you know, definitely no kids in the room. But yeah, probably no women either would probably be a good idea. And we'll get into why here. So anyway, so our story starts off. Um, the reason why I say it's, it, you know, seems like the Japanese take on a giallo is because in the beginning of the movie... Okay, we have this beautiful young lady. She's getting off of a, you know, she's getting off of a train and she's walking and everything, and she's being followed. And we get the, you know, one thing that you usually see in a lot of giallos: the faceless killer wearing the black gloves and everything else. The only difference is in this one, you know, you know, the killer is wearing sandals on his feet. You know, usually they wear like heavy boots or something like that. So it comes up, you know, knocks the girl, you know, knocks the girl unconscious, puts her in a car, he's driving, and, you know, he starts attacking her. At one point, she's, you know, he stops the car, she's able to get out. And so he's, you know, attacking her even more, he's, he's violating her and stuff. And at one point, he, you know, <sighs> anyway, so anyway, so uh, he ends up, he, he spreads her legs and he takes a light bulb and he inserts the light bulb inside of her, and then he takes his foot and stomps down on her to crush the light bulb inside of her. Yeah, so that's how our movie begins, folks. And so uh, he ends up killing her, and then it turns out there's this kind of old abandoned factory building, you know, that uh, the killer, when he kills his victims, you know, he takes the bodies and he dumps them down an elevator shaft and just kind of leaves them there to rot. The one thing is there there's a bad continuity issue here because the thing is <clears throat> it's like you know it is known in the movie <clears throat> sorry it is known in the movie that the guy does um, you know he kills his female victims and he dumps their bodies in this elevator and yet this bot this building is always completely deserted there's no you think like you know they keep finding bodies there and stuff you know it's like you'd think they would have like police or detectives or undercover cops somebody staking this thing out you know so in case the guy comes back and and the guy had clearly has been back a number of times but i don't know for whatever reason they just don't bother to you know they don't bother to you know keep this place under surveillance okay so now we get to our main story well you know th this that's kind of the thing though it's like you know you're kind of going with this giallo thing here and it you know, and it, it kind of does kind of pepper out throughout the movie, but it's really not the focus. It's very much more of a tiny little subplot. There is like another scene where he, this faceless killer attacks another woman and, and clearly the guy is misogynist. He hates women. Um, he considers, you know, like women are all dirty. Women are all awful and, and he needs to clean them. At one point, like he kills, a he strangles a girl 
and he's like, you know, I have to clean your dirty body, so he spreads your legs, and, and he pours acid down there, you know, and stuff. So, yeah, so, you know, this guy, you know, he's, he's not a nice guy. Let's just put it that way. But now we're going to get to our main story, which is uh, we have a, a lady named Tamako, and uh, she's, you know, she's married to this man, and, you know, he was married before, but he married, you know, I guess his wife died or left or whatever. So he married this Tamako, and, uh, you know, he's with her, and, you know, this guy has a daughter, so this is Tamako's stepdaughter, and so... Uh, she's being tutored by this guy named Kentaro, and Kentaro uh, turns out like is probably the best way to say it is uh, Kentaro is probably a huge horn dog, like you know every chance he gets, like all like this guy constantly all he wants to do is just you know grope and grab it at Tamako and and try to force himself on, it. and that's one thing you know and. I've noticed, I've seen, like, maybe three of these, uh, Nikatsu, um, uh, Nikatsu, uh, erotic films from the collection, and I will tell you this, uh, one thing you better be prepared for, there is a lot, and I mean a lot, of, you know, men forcing themselves on women, so if that's something that you're not really into, then yeah, you probably want to avoid this whole line of movies altogether, because it is a constant threat throughout a lot of these films, at least in the three that I've seen, but... So anyway, so uh, he's, you know, he keeps like trying to force himself on Tamako and she's like, no, we can't and everything else. And so he's like, well, the time is up. I got to go home. And for whatever the hell reason, she decides she's just going to go, go ahead and go with him. And so they're walking together and they come across this old building and they start talking about, oh my God, that's that old abandoned building, you know, which should be completely closed off, you know, but that's that old abandoned building where, you know, um, the guy, the killer, you know, has been killing women and dumping their bodies and stuff like that. And so Kentaro's like, oh, let's go in and we'll look around. And she said, no, no, I can't go in there and all this kind of stuff. But he manages to get her to go in. And so they're going in and all this kind of stuff. And it turns out they're both kind of morbid and um, kind of a little bit on the pervy side, the both of them. And so she's talking about, oh, my God, could you imagine, you know, like she had a light bulb inserted in her and all this. And he's like, I'll put a light bulb inside you and all this kind of stuff. Well, so anyway, so he, he finds a room with kind of like a mattress on the floor, and so he brings Tamako in there, and he, you know, puts her on there, and he rapes her. And so, you know, they get done and all this kind of stuff, and so he's telling, you know, uh, he's uh, telling Tamako about, like, you know, I never, you know, I was like, I don't give a shit about tutoring this kid. I just took the job so I could be close to you, and, you know, I just want to be there with you all the time, and, and you, you know, you get me all riled up, and blah, 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 and so they're going to start, you know, they're starting for round two, and then they get interrupted, so, you know, they they go, they find a place to hide, and this guy, um, I'm going to call him the chief, because really in the movie, they never really say what the character's name is, and the only, the only thing I ever heard him call, he's called the chief, because it turns out the guy, you know, is a manager of a, of a local grocery store. Well, so anyway, this guy, the chief, and uh, he has this uh, young girl, Fumio. And um, they come in there and, you know, and they start, you know, getting it on and all this kind of stuff. And, and um, you can kind of see where this is going. And so he's talking about how, you know, he wants her and she's just the sexiest thing ever. And, and if she would be with him, he would gladly sell his house and you know, get her whatever apartment, you know, she wants and everything else, you know, um, you know, he, you know, and so they're having sex. And so she tells him, you know, like the best way for me to enjoy it, you got to choke me. And so he starts, you know, it started with one hand. And then she's like, you know, you got to do it with both hands. So he does it with both hands. And, and so, you know, he's going and he doesn't realize it, but he ends up strangling her to death. And so he's upset. He's, he's horrified. He didn't want to kill the girl. I mean, it was a complete accident, but he did kill her. And so he's thinking, well, you know, this is the, the abandoned building where the, you know, killer dumps all of his victims. So he goes, he finds the elevator shaft, and he takes Fumio's body and dumps her down the elevator shaft. And, you know, he's like, just trying to make it look like, you know, the killer killed this girl. But the thing is, is both Tamako and Kentaro saw what he did. And so, you know, everybody kind of leaves, go about their separate ways and all this kind of stuff. And so Kentaro, he starts to become conflicted about the whole thing. And, uh, you know, he's, you know, at first he's talking about, like, I think we should go to the cops and 
all this kind of stuff. Tamako, she's, you know, like, she doesn't want to go to the cops because she's like, you know, if, if we go to the cops, they're going to not want to know what the hell we were doing there and all this kind of stuff. And it's like, I don't want my husband to find out we were there, you know, messing around and all this. And so, you know, she's like, can't you just keep your mouth shut and maybe, you know, nobody will figure out we were there and all this and we just kind of go. And so Kentaro's kind of like, you know, yeah, okay, yeah, maybe that'd just be the best thing to do. Just don't talk about it and stuff. And then his girlfriend, Maya, uh, he finally breaks down. He tells her, "Is like, yeah, we were there, and you know, we were fooling around, and all this kind of stuff, and you know, we wa we saw this guy kill this girl, and so, you know, I was like, I don't know. I think maybe I should go to the police and everything else. And Maya, his girlfriend, she's like, you know, well, what you really ought to do is you should just go ahead and, you know, you know, blackmail Tamako. Clearly, she wants to keep this thing secret." It's like, you know, you could blackmail her and, you know, we could get a lot of money. We could go off and travel and do all kinds of fun stuff. So why don't you just go ahead and, you know, um, you know, tell her, you know, hey, you know, you want me to keep quiet. You got to pay up. Which in horror movies, we know how these things usually go. And so uh, and so the rest of the movie is, uh, you know, you kind of start getting into this kind of almost like a Hitchcock kind of a thriller kind of a plot line. And, and so Tamako, she's, you know. Um, she's kind of just out and about doing her thing, and then she finds out that this guy, Chief, he's the manager of this grocery store and everything. And so, you know, but the thing is, the problem is, is like she's being really, really bad about like, you know, being, you know, inconspicuous. She's, she's like, she's doing everything she can. I mean, she may as well just go up to the guy and say, hey, I know who you are and I saw what you did. Because, I mean, almost everything she's doing is like, you know, setting off alarm bells for this guy. And this guy, he's, you know, and the guy is, he's guilt-ridden, and there's some pretty graphic um, kind of, you know, uh, vaginal imagery, you know, I'll just leave it at that. Pretty graphic and bloody and stuff. <coughs> but, you know, this guy, he's <clears throat> he's very upset about what he did, and, and you know, he's guilt-ridden, but at the same time, too, he's desperate. And, you know, he doesn't want to get caught. And so, um, you know, at one point, you know, he, it doesn't take much for this guy to figure out that Tamako is on to him. You know, like I said, she's very, very bad about, you know, I mean, because, you know, she keeps driving by the grocery store all the time. And he, like when he's standing outside, she's always kind of like, you know, I mean, she's making it very clear, like she knows something. And, and eventually, you know, the guy does catch on and he goes to her. And so, um, you know. So he goes to her, and, you know, she's she's clearly scared, and so he ends up raping Tamako, and he tells her, you know, like, he, he basically lets her know, you know, look, I'm scared, I'm desperate, I didn't mean to kill this girl, I don't want to get caught, I don't want to go to jail. But here's, the, you know, so he rapes her, and then he tells her, if, you know, you tell the cops, I'll tell your husband what we did, and I'll tell him you loved every minute of it, and in a way she kind of did, <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Sorry. So anyway, so now you get to a point where um, you have Tamako. She's trying to figure out like what to do, and she's getting pressure from both Kentaro and Maya that you know they want her to pay money, otherwise they're going to go to the cops. And so now she's kind of starting to form a bond with this guy, the chief, because now she's starting to feel the same thing. She's starting to go through the same thing that he's going through which is she's scared, she's desperate, she doesn't want this to get out, she doesn't want to be caught, all this other kind of stuff. And at the same time, the, um, you know, the, the uh, glove killer is still out there targeting women, and I'll pretty much just go ahead and leave it at that. Um, like I said, uh, this is a movie I, I just really can't picture watching very often. Um, you know, I think last night when I watched this to get ready to prepare for the video, I think it's probably about the second time I watched it. Um, like I said, I don't recommend watching this with women or kids in the room. Um, I think, you know, after what I've told you, there's definitely some stuff in here that's going to be objectionable. But, uh, you know, I mean, I guess if you want to go ahead and check it out, I mean, you know, uh, you, you know, you feel in a morally bankrupt mood, this movie will definitely, you know, help you out with that. Um, but, yeah, just, uh, I don't know. I think when it comes to uh, Asian horror, probably some better... Some better selections out there. Ones that, you know, doesn't feature, you know, a whole ton of, you know, the R word. But, um, you know, it, the movie does fly by at a brisk pace. I will give it that. I think it's only, was it? Uh, it's only 67 minutes long. So it's just barely over an hour. So at least you got that going for you. So if you watch it, 
you know, just over an hour, so. But yeah, I mean, I can't, that's the thing, I can't really say I could recommend this movie, you know. I just can't really say, oh yeah, it's cool, yeah, go ahead and check it out, and all this. Like I said, this is, you know, if you're in, kind of more in the mood for something disturbing, and like I said, if you're more in a, you know, you're in a morally bankrupt kind of mood, I would say check it out then, but just, you know, just, I don't know, just kind of be warned, kind of know what you're getting yourself into, and and that goes for this Nikatsu uh, erotic film collection, you know, just kind of know what you're getting yourself into, even though I, I understand that the, the Japanese have a different way of doing things than we do here, but, uh, yeah, just kind of like, kind of, you know, try to get a feel, know what you're getting yourself into. So, uh, I think that's pretty much about it, and, um, so, yeah. So, uh, if anybody took the time to watch this video, I thank you for doing it, and I appreciate you for doing it. I also hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave it a like. If you haven't already, go and subscribe to the Body Bags channel. We have a different reviewer, one for every day of the week. I'm the Saturday reviewer. Um, you know, if you ever, if anybody's ever interested, you know, I have my own channel, too, Terry and Tats, and, you know, do 4K reviews and haul videos and things like that. So, you know, if you want to check that out, you know, I'd be happy to have you. So uh, that's it, everybody. Take care and uh, have a good night.